Good morning. I want to welcome you to Austin Heights this 11th Sunday after Pentecost for our special worship in honor of indigenous peoples. Please join me in the greeting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Now please go to one another with these ancient words of greeting. The Lord be with you. As you make your way back to your seats, I'd like to bring your attention, attention to our announcements. But before we get into that, I always forget this part. In the, there's black folders here on the outermost seats, pews. Yes, that right there. Thank you, Bob. If you could sign in so we can get attendance for the day, that would be appreciated. Thank you so much. And it's a way we can keep in contact with you if you are new to the church. Um, the announcements are here on this insert. Uh, the pool party for youth group, our annual pool party is 3.30 to 6 p.m. If you haven't already RSVP'd, please come up to me and let me know if you're gonna be able to make it or not. Um, and then the youth lock-in, there's a slight change on the time. It's actually at 10 a.m. So if you are going to the youth lock-in, and you haven't let me know yet, please talk to me. If you guys need help with transportation, let me know. I'm more than happy to like get kids here so that we can have this event happen. If you have any other questions about that, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I know we have a quilt as well. Good morning. This quilt that we will pass around is for Bob Ball. That's Mike Ball's brother. He has pancreatic cancer and will be having surgery on the 18th. So the prayers that he has requested for this quilt is for a safe and successful surgery and recovery after surgery. So we'll pass it around, tie a knot, right over left, left over right. Again, his name is Bob Ball. Make sure it gets passed through. This side will start and then make sure it gets across to the other side and comes throughout the congregation. So there are lots of prayers and he feels the love that we're sending. First of all, today is the last day to give to supply our schools. There's still some envelopes um, in the pockets um, behind um, chairs if you would like to give. Remember, it is for school supplies for kids in Nacogdoches County, um, and uh, we want to be generous. So today's the last day to give to that. Um, you see in the uh, order of service the um, insert that talks about the pilgrimage to Montgomery. We are um, taking a group to Montgomery. Alabama there are legacy sites there the Equal Justice Initiative is doing important work preserving and telling the stories of enslaved people there are three legacy sites that tell the history and create an experience for visitors to be immersive and visceral there will be time to reflect in small groups as well as time to process with the large group um, 
limit the the group is limited to 100 so we need to be getting our reservations in it says September 1st but if you would like to go with us it's going to be a great trip we have seven for sure three four maybe five who are still thinking about it so um, be sure you let me know so we can get reservations in we need to get um, lodging and transportation settled too it is going to be a great trip um, it's going to be um, uh, great time to be thoughtful and um, confessional. Um, thank you. Thank you, Judy. And just choir practice at six. Um, so, you know, if anyone wants to join choir, you've been thinking about it, now's the time. Um, okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and start to prepare with worship with a land acknowledgement. One of our youth is gonna read that for us. As we prepare for worship, we acknowledge that the land this church stands on and the surrounding areas were and still are the ancestral lands of the Caddo and other unknown indigenous tribes. Um, we're gonna be reading from a book called The Soul Would Have No Rainbow If the Eyes Had No Tears. And it's a book of indigenous proverbs Proverbs are time-honored truths which condense the collected wisdom and experience of a people and their culture. If you want to know a people, the saying goes, know their proverbs. Proverbs often serve as a means of instruction in the rules of conduct and ethical behavior expected by all members of a society. What makes them an effective tool is that they are based on a keen observation of human nature and behavior rather than an idealized and unrealistic standard. These proverbs collected in this book are those of people who love the land and regard it as sacred, who see daily prayer as a duty and have no need to set apart one day in seven as a holy day, but rather observe every day as God's day. The proverb today is from the Shenandoah tribe. It is no longer good enough to cry peace. We must act peace, live peace, and live in peace. Let us worship God. <clears throat>
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundance mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sins is ever before me. Against you, you alone. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach See, me wisdom fine. in my secret okay. heart. You're fine. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my qualities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your body, oh, your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me. It, you're done. I want to go back. No, you're O great creator of all, we call upon you this morning. Send your spirit upon this place and on these people gathered here. Have us be moved by what we learn and experience today to continue the work of justice for indigenous peoples. We pray your holy fire ignites a passion for righteousness and that we look at the example of Jesus to guide our steps. All this and more we pray in your holy and blessed name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The children may come up for our children's message.
what happened? There were only like five loaves and two little fishes. It was like they fed, Jesus blessed it and fed all of the people with that, right? Well, there's a continuation of this story. Say again. I bet you did, because that's a story we tell often, because it's really important. But we don't often talk about what happened after that story. After that, Jesus and his disciples were really tired, so they took a boat and they crossed the lake to the other side. Well, the people who were fed got up the next day, and they thought, where did that guy go? We want to talk to him again. So they got in boats, and they went and found Jesus. And they said... You know, we're interested in what you were saying, and you said that you're the Son of God, but can you give us a sign that you're the Son of God? Well, do you think those people had already had the sign that maybe thought Jesus was the Son of God? <laughs> I think maybe they did, but they said they needed another sign. Well, I have a story today about a little girl who had lots of signs and just missed a lot of them. It's called my Spring Robin. And she loved a robin that sang a song for her every day last summer. She said, I liked that robin. But in the fall, my robin flew away. My father said it would come back in the spring, and she decided that would be her sign that spring had come. So when it got to be warmer, she went looking for that spring robin. I saw a bee taking honey from a crocus, but I didn't see my robin. I looked into the yellow forsythia bush, but my robin wasn't there. My robin was not sitting high up in the branches of the magnolia tree. In the fern garden behind our outdoor table, fuzzy fiddleheads were sprouting in the last year's wet brown leaves but I didn't see my robin there. Do you think she's getting some signs along the way? I saw a tiny toad. It hopped behind a clump of daffodils to hide from me. I looked high up into the sky to see if my robin was flying back to me. Drops of rain fell on my face and our neighbor's cat ran home. After that shower, I picked a little bunch of purple violets for my mother. I watched a shiny earthworm wiggle up out of the ground. And guess what? I heard it. Cheer up, Charlie, cheer up, Charlie. I knew who was singing that song. It was my spring robin. Did she miss some signs of spring along the way? She did, didn't she? Because she was only looking for one thing, for one sign. A robin, that's right. And sometimes we think there might only be one thing that will tell us that Jesus is God's son and tell us about God's love. But we need to look all around us every single day and see God's love around us. When we um, have good times with our friends, when we're with our families, when we're here at church and we learn the stories about God's love and get to talk to our friends here at church and the adults who love us. So remember, every day, keep your eyes and hearts open so that you can look for God's love every day. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, help us to open our eyes and our hearts to see the signs of your love all around us. Help us to live so that we are a sign of your love to everyone we meet. Amen. Amen. And today you are going back to Children's Church with Miss Heather and Miss Maddie. As the children make their way back, I just noticed we don't have, I guess, the prayers of the people. Um, so we're gonna just put it in there invisibly with our minds. So, um, do we have any updates, any new?
Okay, well, um, let's join together in prayer. I will lead us in prayer, and then we will end with the Lord's Prayer. Oh God, we come before you this morning with heavy hearts. There are so many things in this world that are difficult to deal with, illness, pain, war, and we are afraid. But God, you have sent reminders to us that there is hope, there is joy, there is truth that is waiting for us. God, help us to lean into each other during these difficult times, and most especially to lean into you when we are feeling so low and so down. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to show us how to love one another and to love the world in a more peaceful and true way. We pray all this and more in the words that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen let us confess our sins first in silence Please join me in the corporate confession. O oh God of many names, we come before you as sinners who want to get it right. We have not been faithful to you or towards each other. We have turned from indigenous peoples and denied them their proper places. We discriminate against them without even realizing we do it. We allow their oppression abuse and mistreatment for fear of speaking truth to the powers that be. Forgive us, O Sacred One, through our beloved Son, and send the Holy Spirit upon us, our actions and our words, to counter these sins with your will for all your precious children. Amen. Through the good news of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks to be to the Holy One.
Exodus 16, 2 through 4, and 9 through 15. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into the desert to starve, this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from the heavens for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard you grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you are to eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came, covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw this, they, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord have given you to eat. I'll be doing a version of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 16 from the First Nations version of the New Testament. Because I walk the road with our honored chief, I have been made a prisoner. I now call on you to join me in representing him in a good way as you follow the path he has chosen for you. Walk with a humble and gentle spirit patiently showing love and respect to each other. Let his spirit weave you together in peace as you dance and step with one another in the great circle of life. In this circle, we are joined together in one body by one spirit chosen to follow one purpose. There is only one honored chief, one common faith, and one purification ceremony. There is one great spirit and father of us all who is above all, and he works in and through all. His great kindness has gifted each of us from the headdress of the chosen one. That is why it is said, when he was lifted up on high, he captured many warriors, took their spoils of war, and gave them back to the people. What does he was lifted up mean? It could only mean that he had to first come down into the lowest parts of the earth, so he could be lifted up to the highest place and be the one who would restore all things. He gifted us with message bearers, prophets, tellers of the good story, and wisdom keepers who watch over us like a shepherd watches over his sheep. These gifts were given to prepare creator's holy people for the work of helping others and to make the body of the chosen one strong until we all follow the good road in harmony with each other because we know and understand who creator's son is. We will then be like the chosen one mature human beings living and walking in his ways and fully reflecting who he is. No longer will we be like children who are tossed about by the waves and follow every voice they hear in the wind. We will no longer listen to the ones who behave like tricksters with their forked tongues. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm going to be reading John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35, from the First Nations Version of the Bible. 
or the New Testament, which is an indigenous translation of the New Testament. When they could not find Creator Sets Free, Jesus, or his followers, they climbed into the canoes to go to the village of Comfort, Capernaum, to find him. When they arrived on the other side and found Creator Sets Free, they asked, Wisdom Keeper, when did you get here? Creator Sets Free ignored their question and said to them, Listen closely to my words. You are not looking for me because of the powerful sign you saw, but only because you filled your bellies with food. Why are you working so hard for food that fades away? You should work for the food that gives you the life of the world to come that never fades away. The true human being will give you this food, for he has the Father's full approval. What does Great Spirit require from us, they asked, so we can do what he wants and have his approval also? Here is what he wants you to do, he answered. Put your trust in the one he has sent. What powerful sign will you show us that we should trust in you, they asked. What sign will you perform? When our ancestors were wandering in the desert, they ate bread, just as the sacred teachings tell us. From the spirit world above, he gave them bread to eat. Listen closely, Creator sets free answered. Drawn from the water, Moses did not give you the bread from the spirit world above. It is my Father who gives you the true bread that comes down from the spirit world above. This bread gives the life of beauty and harmony to the world. Honored one, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Creator sits free, smiled, held out his arms to them and said, I am the bread of life that came down from the spirit world above. The ones who come to me will hunger no more, and the ones who trust me will thirst no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear blessed creator, dear mother, dear savior, dear father, dear brother, dear holy other, dear sibling, dear baby, dear patiently. These are one of the joys of modern church. Dear blessed creator, dear mother, dear savior, dear father, dear brother, dear holy other, dear sibling, dear baby, 
dear patiently waiting dear sad and confused dear stuck and abused dear end of your rope dear worn out and broke dear go it alone dear running from home dear righteously angry forsaken by family dear jaded and quiet Dear tough and defiant, I pray that I'm heard, and I pray that this works. I pray if a prayer has been used as a sword against you and your heart against you and your word i pray that this prayer is a plowshare of sorts that it might break you open it might help you grow i pray that your body gets all that it needs and if you don't want healing i just pray for peace I pray that your burden gets lighter each day. I pray the mean voice in your head goes away. I pray that you honor the grief as it comes. I pray you can feel all the life in your lungs. I pray that if you go all day being brave, that you can go home, go to bed, feeling safe i pray you're forgiven i pray you forgive i pray you set boundaries and openly live i pray that you feel you are worth never leaving i pray that you know i will always believe you i pray that you're And I pray that this works. Amen on behalf of the last and the least, on behalf of the anxious, depressed, and unseen. Amen for the workers, the hungry, the houseless. Amen for the lonely and reed spouseless amen for the queers and their closeted peers amen for the bullied and in their tears amen for the mothers of little black sons amen for the kids who grow up scared of guns amen for the addicts the ashamed and hung over amen for the cats the wise and the sober and amen for the ones who want life to be over and amen for the leaders who lose their composure and amen for the parents who just lost their baby amen for the chronically ill and disabled amen for the children down at the border amen for the victims of our law and order, I pray that you're heard. And I pray that this works. a prayer has been used as a sword against you and your heart against you and your word i pray that this prayer is a plowshare of sorts
slideshow working, Matt? You can show pictures? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So originally we were going to try to have some sort of slideshow situation, but we were having technical difficulties this morning. Um, the song that you just heard, Plowshare Prayer, that was um, part of our final worship service that we did on mission. And so we wanted to share that with you guys because I think we all felt really moved by the message in the song that everyone deserves prayer. So. Um, most of you guys know me, I'm Christina. I'm our youth group leader, but I really wanted to let our youth turn, over, t turn the mic over to them to tell them about their experience in New Mexico, what they learned, how they grew, um, and what they feel fired up to change um, in our community in Nacogdoches. So I'm gonna ask this youth right here to go first. Please introduce yourself so that they know who you are and tell it and let everyone know what church you all are from because a lot of you guys are like oh who are these kids and a lot of them are not from Austin Heights so go ahead hi everyone um, my name is Peyton Lewis and I go to FEMC Nacogdoches um, I've been involved uh, with NYA for like it's been like three years now mm -hmm. three years yep yeah, and it's just, it's been a really great experience for me. I never really, I grew up in a really small church like this, so we didn't have a youth group. I was the only one my age. So being able to be a part of something like this has been a life-changing experience, and it's been, <laughs> it's been really good for me. Um, this year was my second mission trip. And last year we went to Chicago, as some of you know, but this year the message was a bit different. Last year we were more service oriented. This year it was more learning oriented. We got to learn about the indigenous peoples of New Mexico and their history and their story and really got to connect with their culture a lot more. And that's something that really I've never gotten to experience before and I've never gotten to do because that's never something I was exposed to. I knew very, very little, and this this trip has been an eye-opening experience. It's been eye-opening to their culture and to their history and their story, and now I know a lot more, and I know how to best respect them and to honor their culture and their story. Um, we got to talk to a lot of different people. We had a lot of guest speakers that all were, they shared their history for themselves and their family. And we got to see multiple presentations and multiple different tellings of stories um, for their culture. And that was something that I really connected with and that resonated with me because that's, that's the thing that, that really showed me how little most of us know about different cultures that aren't our own. That, that experience was, and still is, a, it, was, it was a lot, but it was really, really good. And I am forever grateful that I got to experience that because now I know, now I know a lot more. And I know how to respect them and how to share their culture and how to support them the best way that I am able to. Thank you, Peyton. And as you can see, um, she's been on mission three times now, so um, that's exciting. And this youth right here, this was his first mission trip ever, so I'm going to let him, yes, introduce himself and tell us which church he's coming from and a little bit about his experience. All right. I'm coming from the Big Sandy Church of God. Yeah? All right. I knew it. And this is my, what she just said, this is my first mission trip that I've been on, and it was a very fun experience for, uh, for me. Uh, learning about the, the cultures and how different they are between just from one side of, to the other of the United States of how different all the cultures can be. Oh, wow, it's much louder now. 
hear myself. Hmm. What was the favorite thing? What was the th favorite thing I did? Hmm. Uh, we did some service, uh, at a food pantry called, what was it, the storehouse, the storehouse, storehouse, and that was probably my favorite place that we served at, because we were just helping so much people with all the, the food that we were given giving away and also it was a really fun challenge because I was uh, filling up shopping carts we were filling up shopping carts and I'd put a box in uh, some cereal and another thing in and it's pretty easy at first but then when six shopping carts come along all together what cart what Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I lost my train. I think you didn't tell him your name. What? I don't think you told us your name. Have I not told you my name? No. I thought you introduced <laughs> me. <gasps> You'll never know. It's Cater. My name is Cater. Nice to meet you. <laughs> all right. Is that all? Is that all? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Cater Cartwright, everybody. And this kid, I will say, he is, he has such a servant's heart. I mean, it was rare if Matt and I needed help or Brianna, he was one of the first youth who was always up and ready to help and a lot of times didn't even need to be asked. And so I'm going to also ask one of our other first timers, right, Addison, this was also your first mission trip ever. Go ahead and tell us, introduce us and tell us what church you're from. My name is Addison Lewis and I'm from FUMC. And as she said, this is my first time that was my first time doing, being on a mission trip. And I had a really good experience. Storehouse was also one of my favorite things to do because um, we were helping so many people. I think we filled like 238 shopping carts that day. And it was just a really good experience seeing how the communities help other people. And um, we also, I also really liked learning about other people's cultures, like the guest speakers. They were really informative and helpful. And I, my job was interviewing everybody. So I got to interview a lot of interesting people and write a story about them. So that was really fun to do. Thank you. And she's from First United Methodist, too. I don't know if she had said that, but obviously there's a family here. So. Hi, I'm Yuki. Most of you know me. Uh, I'm, I go here. This is my church. That's my family, and that's also my family. Um, for those of you who got the newsletter, I'm the one who wrote Yuki's Breakdown. My father informed me. got a little saucy towards the end. I apologize. That was from exhaustion. Uh, <laughs> um, of course, Peyton stole about everything I wanted to say because she loves to talk <laughs> so much. Um, but yeah, we had a great time on our mission. It was a lot different from our Chicago trip. Was, it was more focused on um, green space and environmental justice. And this trip was more focused on justice for people and trying to um, give others a leave from oppression. And by the way, do not refer to somebody as an elder because if they are not an elder, they might actually get in trouble. <laughs> so warning for if anybody ever goes to Me New Mexico. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, funny story. Uh, so newsletter, back to the newsletter, we referred to one of our guest speakers, I believe, as, a, uh, as an elder. And <laughs> she got back to us with a couple edits that we needed to put in there of, hey, I'm not an elder, despite my age. If you say that, I could get in trouble with the actual elders. <laughs> so learning experience. My hands are shaking. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> oh, my 
gosh, I'm not good at public speaking. This isn't really the public. You get the point, though. Yeah, this is my church. Care, do you want to go next? So Yuki was one of our columnists, for those of you that got the newsletter. So Yuki's breakdown was, uh, this is our first year you having Yuki as a writer. And now we're going to introduce our next youth, um, who a lot of you guys probably don't know. And so take it away. Here you go. You got this there. Yes. I'm going to try not to cry, OK? <laughs> um, I am, my actual name's Carolyn Mathis, but I go by Care. Some of y'all know me. Um, because of these kiddos. Um, uh, day one was a, a little crazy. Um, we got a hotel room, and I was booked with that one and that one. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really fun. Um, and then we decided that I was going to download a Bible app. So every night we had to read a verse. What is that called again? The devotion we did. No, it's the, what's the Bible called? Oh, the KJV. Yeah. Um, so, oh, out thou. Um, <laughs> was very fun. And then, um, I cannot remember, how do you say it again? Cuidando los, los Niños was probably one of my favorites because I got to deal with kids. Um, and I have four nieces, so I love children. <laughs> Um, well, it's kids that really don't have a place to live, and it gives them the opportunity of getting education and stuff, and some people come from, um, like, abusive uh, family situations and stuff like that, and so they really help, like, provide homes and uh, give them education and give them a place to learn and really get taken care of and stuff. Um, I found out that it's also to help parents that are also coming from a relationship like that or coming from a hard time so they can get a job and so they can work, but they don't have to worry about, like, how is my child going to get educated? How is my child, like, I can't take my child with me. Mm -hmm. They kind of help the parents also with that, which is really good. Um, another place I really liked was the, what is it called? Storehouse. Storehouse. That's a, another place I really liked because um, I had a, I was doing like kind of multiple jobs, but I was, uh, there was one part where I was walking out there and me and Katie, which is one of the um, people that was like over the neighbor thing that was there with us, um, she was there. And so we were sitting outside and these two little girls came up to us it was like asking us how like how our day was going and everything, and I <laughs> I literally had to leave for a second and go cry because I was asking them if they needed help with anything, and they said no. We come here a lot actually, and they've been going there like almost all the time to go get food because they they're not able to have food like we do. We can't just go to a grocery store, buy a bunch of food, and have it for weeks. They have to go up there and get a cart to go get food. And they're at least like eight, six, like my niece's age. And so it really touched me a little bit. And so I kind of had to take a step back. And then I realized a lot of us don't realize how good we have it. We, we have a lot. And when you go to those places like that and you help and you serve you notice that people really have nothing like and I've also noticed that when I went there and I've talked to people and I've like asked them questions and stuff a lot of them feel when they feel like they have nothing so they feel like there are nothing and they feel like they don't belong here and it's really really touching me <laughs> sorry um and so, <laughs> like, they do deserve to be here. And it's really hard talking to them. And they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I have a reason to be here. Because we have a reason. We can say, oh, I, I'm going I'm to get an education. I'm going to go to college. I should live for that. 
when they wake up, they're like, what am I living for? I don't have a house. I don't have food. What am I here for? And so it's really hard to see people living like that because they should feel like they belong when they don't. Sorry. (laughs) So in addition to sending three youth on a mission trip for the first time ever, we did have an adult who had never been on mission before, and I want her to come up and share a little bit of her experience. If you would join us here on the stage. Methodist, Methodist. Hi. I wasn't prepared for this. Um, So, yes, two of my kids went, and I decided at the last minute kind of to tag along. I don't really know why, but I felt called to do it, so I'm glad that I did. It is my first mission trip. I never had an opportunity to do this growing up. Um, Didn't really have a home church growing up, so this is like a new thing for me. Um, We're part of First Methodist by way of parrot, it's a car background. Um, And it's, yes, I was a group, you know, leader with Matt and Christina, but I was also kind of just a kid a lot of the time, watching and learning just like the rest of them. Um, And it was was glorious. I mean, it was a beautiful experience for all of us. Um, We did a lot of service work. Every day we did something different, Um, you know, from, Watching everybody, me included, like sorting beans and packaging things, a big, a huge food bank that then gets distributed to, you know, the local food pantries, which was really neat to see. Um, being part of that was just watching kind of like the, the service in action, you know, seeing all the moving parts and how it all goes together. Um, I really, you know, we did 238 carts, like Addison said, about at the food pantry, and it was an exhausting <laughs> exhausting day it was very hot if they had air conditioner I didn't feel it <laughs> um, but it was definitely worth it it's not the right word it definitely made you feel like you accomplished something that day like you felt good leaving at the end of the day when every single person had been served because we didn't leave until every single person that came for help got help and I really loved that no one had to meet any qualifications qualifications or any criteria that is signed up and got in line like you didn't have to like prove your income or you know go through any hoops it's just if you're here you obviously need help let's help you and that was um that was a nice change from some of the other you know service organizations I've, I've seen in the past um, just being able to help whoever showed up um, and we learned a lot about the different cultures the different um, tribes we learned a lot well, we, I enjoyed making the fry bread that we did on one of the nights um, and just learning the different histories of the different tribes because they're, they're all very, very different. I really found it interesting how a lot of the creation stories that the tribes have are very, very comparable to ours um, and the fact that theirs are older than ours um, was very interesting and I'm still reflecting on how what that means and how, that, you know, how I feel about that, but it's just, it was beautiful like it was like I don't know how to put it into words other than it was just my soul felt happy seeing that (laughs) kind of thing it just like God's been here all along he just shows himself in different ways to different people at different times in our work in the life in our lives and it's it was beautiful and learning everything that we learned and seeing everything that we saw kind of reaffirmed in me the belief that the more we learn we realize how little we actually know about anything and so we should always be open to learning more. Yes. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. And, um, of course, this, Matt, you can come up and speak if you would like. Um, we're going to put a time limit on you. Just kidding. But. I, I kind of sort of took notes and gave myself a little script. <laughs> For those of you who know me, you know that I work best whenever I have scripted something so I can edit myself. Um, You think you know somebody, and then you spend nine days with them, and you realize, wow, they're totally different people than I realized. And I mean that in the best way possible. Uh, uh, So my my favorite thing about this, um, I'm going to start with uh, the, the, the ways that we studied the 
uh, the history and the culture of the indigenous peoples uh, there of New Mexico, everything for them, uh, they, they see everything through the lens of gratitude uh, instead of a gimme, gimme, gimme consumerist sort of approach. Everything is thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's easy to read that on paper in a history book. It's easy to see that in videos on YouTube. But whenever you see young people uh, from these pueblos come, they, they live modern lives just like the rest of us. And to see them begin by saying, thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me talk. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for coming and viewing the things that we make, the things that we bring to uh, your group. Uh, it, it sort of made me, and I, and I feel like at least uh, it was on display, uh, it, it made me and us sort of take stock of how we see the world, uh, going back, trying to reevaluate how do we how do we interpret the world around us? Uh, instead of waking up and saying, well, what am I going to do today? Maybe we should be waking up and saying, thank you. Thank you that I'm here. Thank you that I have purpose. Thank you that I have people uh, that support me and us. Uh, the second thing that I found really, really interesting, uh, Be the Neighbor was the organization that we were partnered with and that did all the programming and uh, all of the educational materials, all of the scripture readings, the way that it was structured, the, the video that we saw, uh, our anthem, the song that we listened to, uh, was part of that programming. And one of the things that they shared with us was a video that compared sympathy and empathy. Uh, it, it, the example that they used, I get, or the illustration, I suppose, that they used was uh, of a person falling down a hole and a person uh, demonstrating sympathy who walks past and I don't know they were eating a popsicle or something and they were like hey dude it sucks that you're down there all right see you later and then they move on uh, and then they move on to empathy and the person walks by and climbs down the ladder and gets down there with them and says wow it is terrible down here is terrible to be down here in this hole. Uh, and I was looking around the group, and you see everyone captivated by this as if there was this, yes, this, this understanding. Uh, and my third favorite part, uh, every day during our uh, morning programming, we would pass a basket full of names, and we would randomly choose a name, and that name would become your prayer partner and your goal as a as a prayer partner was number one watch this person watch your partner all day and see where God reveals himself to you where do you see God in this person number two what what do you pray for this person so every night you would see uh, either your part your prayer partner or someone else's prayer partner you would listen to the ways in which people were seeing God in one another and what sort of prayers they were giving to one another. And they were things that they were so personal. Uh, and, 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 and I think, I think uh, having a focus on watching and listening and empathy and history, what it means to, how it informs our future, uh, it made for a, a really wonderful program. Uh, and I feel like uh, like I said before, you spend nine days with somebody, you realize you didn't actually know those people the way you thought you did. Uh, I was very excited to have spent nine days with you, and I'm sure I've worn out my welcome. So uh, I wanted to say, good job, team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just a couple other things. So overall, we worked with homeless children. We worked at a food bank. We worked at a food pantry. We took multiple opportunities to learn about indigenous culture, indigenous history, 
And um, my favorite place was a place called Saranam. It was our first day. It's a Sanskrit word that means refuge, and they are helping families experience homelessness. And it's a two-year housing program. And their success rate was something like 80-something percent success rate. And they had different qualifications for that. But it seemed more like a real solution than, no offense to God tell, but it, it seemed a little more real life answering this issue. Um, and just the last thing, one of the things I learned about the one of the indigenous cultures that we were with is that we, when we hear about Native Americans, oh, they didn't waste anything. Well, that is so true. And I learned that even the pollen from the corn plant is used as part of a blessing ceremony. That is how much they use every little bit of everything is they are using pollen to say thank you to God. So we just want to thank all of you guys because we would not have been able to go on this trip without your support. So thank you so much, Austin Heights, all of our viewers, and anyone else who was involved in that. We really, really appreciate your support. Yeah, all of our viewers, yeah. Okay, the usher. All right, now we're gonna do, yeah, responsive faith with our gifts. Heavenly Father, please help us to vigilantly watch for and see injustices here and in our world around us. Please help us to continue seeking your justice and mercy. Please accept this offering in the name of love, compassion, and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We always sing a final hymn, and during this hymn, if you feel called to join us, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please come up to the front. We will um, welcome you into the fold as we sing. So we're hymn number 437. <laughs>
this week and all the weeks to come. Receive this benediction. May Creator bless you and keep you. May Creator's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may Creator's countenance be upon you and give you peace. And all Creator's people said, Amen. <laughs> Thank you.